Uh, today we're going to explore together the uh, book of Revelation chapter 6. And uh, we've already looked at the first five chapters in brief, so we want to, just a quick overview. Remember back in chapter 1, verse 19, uh, we've mentioned a couple of times already that in that particular verse, it gives us the outline of the book of Revelation when it says, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which take place after these things. Chapter 1 we have mentioned is the things that he has seen, John has seen. Uh, chapters 2 and 3 are the things that are, especially the seven churches of Asia. Chapters 5 and 6 could be lumped in with the things that are, uh, or maybe in the future, but they're kind of a, a transitional uh, section of Scripture either way. As we look at chapters 4 and 5 at this wonderful scene in heaven, uh, the greatest worship service ever recorded. In chapter 4, the focus is on the Father. In chapter 5, it's on the Lamb, uh, Jesus Christ. And we have the whole universe, in a sense, the whole heavens, all the creatures in heaven uh, are glorifying and praising uh, the Father and the Lamb. And that leads us into chapter 6. Now, chapter 6 begins at what we call the tribulation period. This is a time of the greatest judgment that has ever come on the earth from God. God is going to come against all humanity that has rebelled against him, that has rejected him, and bring great judgment. So this chapter 6 through 19 deals with that great subject. So we're so happy, we're so good to have the balance of chapters 4 and 5. Uh, chapter 4 and 5 show us the love of God, uh, the provision of God for our salvation, the worship of, of the Father and the Son in the heavenly realms. So we have this, this glorious picture of God's beauty, God's sovereignty, God's love, God's provision. So it's so good to have that before we jump into a section that is going to be about God's wrath and God's judgment. We need to have that balance in Scripture uh, if we're going to have a right picture of God and how God operates. So we come to chapter 6. And as we come to chapter 6, it says, Then I saw the Lamb broke one of the seven seals. Now remember, he had uh, in chapter 5, uh, there was a book or a scroll in the hand of the Father that the Lamb takes. And, and as he does that, as he takes that seal, chapter 5, verse uh, 7, I mean, that, that scroll, he... It, is, it has got seven seals on it so that no one except he is worthy to open those seals to reveal the content of that scroll. And now as we start chapter 6, those seals are being broken. And as they're being broken by the Lamb, then the content of that scroll is revealed. And that content is going to be what we find in the remainder of the book of Revelation, especially chapter 6 to uh, 19. So that's where we are at this point. Now let me let me mention that coming from that scroll in particular are se three sets of judgments. We have the seven seals that we'll look at today in, in chapter 6, and the, the final one is uh, mentioned in chapter 8. And then we have uh, in chapters 8 and 9, we have the seven trumpet judgments. In between the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments, we have a, an interlude. Uh, a scene that God wants us to know about in chapter 7, and we will look at that next time, uh, or next week. And then after chapter 9, we have a, another very long interlude, and this is, these interludes are not necessarily in chronological order, uh, so we want to be careful there, but they're, they're, they're scenes that God wants us to have. He wants us to know of some things that are taking place either in heaven or on earth, and so he gives us these interludes. Then he picks back up in chapter 16 with the final set of judgments known as the seven bowl judgments. So we have these judgments that are be, be coming along. And as we look at these different judgments, we find that, that the Lord is now going to bring wrath on the earth because of the sinfulness of humanity. Uh, we'll find in the book of Revelation that the, the wrath of God uh, is a, a deserved wrath. People deserve what he's going to bring. We find it's an irresistible wrath, and at the last verse of chapter 6, we, we see that they cannot resist or stand against the wrath of the Lamb. It's a sovereign wrath in that God is in absolute control over all things here. It's his will. It is an eternal wrath because those who reject him uh, ultimately will, will face eternal wrath of God. And keep in mind that the wrath of God is not like blowing off steam or losing uh, one's temper like we do, it is a settled position against sin and against sinners. It is God's justice, God's righteousness against those who have rejected His holiness 
and his rule in their lives. And so we see in the book of Revelation uh, this final picture, these final years, these seven years actually, in which the world rebels against him and rejects him, and God's wrath is poured out in such a way that prior to his coming, uh, the, those who have rejected him have all been dealt with by God's righteous, glorious, sovereign anger or wrath, his justice. So this is what we're going to be looking at as we peel back the uh, pages here uh, on, uh, the, uh, first of all, the sealed judgments uh, next time. We'll look at the first sealed judgment tomorrow, and we'll see what God has for us today. We'll catch you then.